Well, hi, just needed to explain this wonderful uh, second can that's been created by some of our artistic folk, which has been brilliant. You may remember a year ago, at the other end of the garden, a very much plainer set of uh, stones I put together, and we saw it as a cairn, which was a way marker or a way of saying to us how we're to move ahead across this very strange landscape that we then had in front of us. And we had six stones to that cairn. We talked about the presence of God, the authority of the scriptures, and the need to base our lives on that, the sense of movement or journey, the importance of community, our focus on being a church that was shaped by mission rather than it being mission something we did and focusing on the coming of the kingdom of God in our communities, new, new cultures, new communities, new people. Well, a year on, we've been walking this way together for a year and as we thought might happen, various things have emerged in the course of that year to help us understand not just where we've been, but how we continue to walk. And those themes we've now built into a second cairn, at least I'm going to try and make the stones stay upright as we build it. And each of the seven stones of this cairn represents something of a theme that God's built into our life together that we want to walk in as we go forward. So it's both about what we've learned across, the, across this uh, space we've been walking over the last year, but it is also a guide to the future. Now there may well be a cairn on a hill up ahead that draws us on, but this will help us walk towards that cairn as well. So the seven things that have emerged over the period of time is firstly you can see this this base stone is made of stone from Barden Abbey. There's a nice little notch in it somewhere, I think you can see it over here. It's got a little bit of slightly pink coloured mortar in it and uh, that's probably 12th or 13th century and it basically says to me that um, the foundation of all we do in terms of the way we go about life as a church is really wonderfully reflected in monastic practice more familiar to us as the apostles devoting themselves to the apostles teaching the breaking of bread the fellowship and the prayer that's our kind of default that's the position that we go into when we're challenged and it's something we really want to keep as those rhythms of prayer that times of being together albeit online much of the time over the last year having regular communion and uh, being committed devoted to the word of god and living in that so that's bedrock for us the second stone it's a stone which represents the creativity that's emerged and Helen's done this beautifully. Uh, so we see here some, well there's some hands around this side, I don't know if you can see those, which represent both the hands, the creative hands and the hands of the Creator God. You've got some um, beautiful uh, artistic work here on, about nature. Here we have Dave the Sheep, which uh, Sarah will remember well and a feather on top which represents one of the songs. So it's all the kinds of creativity that have emerged over this last year, which has been phenomenal really, and has helped us understand what God's saying, and also, you know, in, including illustrating some of the prophetic stuff or the songs or whatever that we've had. Remember too the beautiful fabric that Anne made, remember the gardens that have been creatively done, remember Zoom activities, remember Advent uh, trails. There's such a huge range of stuff, stuff the children have, children have done, all, all ages really. So that's creativity, which we don't want to lose. It's so such a wonderful thing in the life of the church. It always has been there in Threshold, but I really think it's multiplied in the year behind us. And the third thing is the whole emphasis on small communities. Sarah's done this. Uh, she's filming it, that's why I keep saying Sarah. And uh, you can see these wonderful small boats, the sense of small, flexible craft that are agile, that are manoeuvrable, that are semi-autonomous really, but can very much work together as well as a fleet that goes fishing together or takes a journey together. Absolutely lovely. Other images we've had are of windmills or other uh, things that have represented to us smaller communities, which we really believe is what God's asking of us in the future. To do life together in smaller communities, whether that's geographically based like in a particular village, or whether that's based around a network and particular interest. But it's so important we do life together in these. The fourth stone, it's one that uh, and Evans has done, and it's um, to represent the emergence of the prophetic in our life over the past year. Uh, on top we've got a parting of the sea, the Red Sea. Uh, at the side you've got um, the whole imagery of rewilding and nature. Here you've got your small boats again, this time in harbour, uh, and accompanied by merchant ships. 
uh, behind here, you may not be able to see it from there, but there's uh, actually I'll show you, uh, there's windmills representative of the kind of communities, small communities again, that we have. So there's been that, what's been represent, represented on there by Anne, but so much more prophetic stuff by folks outside the church, Duane, Paul Bradbury, George Lings and others, as well as what's emerged from within the life of the church. And we don't want to lose that prophetic emphasis. Really important for us as the future to hear God, for each of us to be able to hear God for ourselves. And the prophetic is important. One, two, three, four, fifth. So the fifth stone, one that's Mary's done, is to represent community, the way of doing life together, focusing on our local communities and helping out our neighbours, those really close to us. And it's, it's been an amazing time of people serving their neighbourhoods, really, um, in all sorts of ways, whether it's delivering medicines or delivering food, whether it's um, about just looking out for the neighbours to make sure they're OK, or whether it's been to do with praying for them or taking them goodies round or whatever. It's been such a good time. And all around the edge of this stone, you can see representations of community, people holding hands together, looking after each other in different places, different villages, different networks. We don't want to lose that local engagement, do we? That sort of focus on who's, who's around us. That's such an important thing to maintain. And then the sixth stone, one that Mary's done, is one about the care of creation. And there's two sides to this. There's firstly the most beautiful um, illustration of flowers, of butterflies, of, of, of beavers, of birds, of mountains, of rivers, of fruit trees, of octopus, <laughs> all kinds of birds. It's brilliantly done. And it represents both our call to care for creation as a church, kind of represented now in our little adventure into eco-church. But the flip side of that is also understanding from the whole a natural phenomenon of rewilding, that rewilding the church is something we're being asked to do, to take our hands off, to release rather than control, only to um, reintroduce things as God leads us and see the church come to a place where it's vibrant and sustainable and lots of communities that really interact with the folks around them. So that's the sixth stone, thank you, Mary. And the last one, which again, Sarah's done, is about accessibility. It's about being accessible as a church, both face to face and online. So you see this beautiful network that she's done. That, that represents our kind of digital ways of access, whether it's website or WhatsApp or Zoom or Facebook Live or all the other platforms we've been using this year, as well as face to face stuff. It's really important that um, we remain accessible to God, to each other, and to other people, and we use everything in our, in our means, every means available to us to make that happen. I'll see if I can balance it on top. <laughs> so there you go. So they're the seven emphases we really feel we should walk by in the road ahead. It's not that there aren't others or more won't come. But at the moment, if we live by these, as we take our journey into the future, we can't go far wrong in God.